Hi everyone, I welcome you all. Uh, we are here today and during this uh, break time with uh, Amirali Alipai and uh, wonderful artist Afraz Mulji. And um, uh, it was wonderful uh, collaboration. Uh, usually when we create exhibition at the Aga Khan Museum, uh, we also work uh, interdisciplinary and interdepartmentally. And Amirali and I, we share uh, the same passion for art and performance art. And when, when I was co-creating this exhibition with Suzanne Akbari, uh, we consulted uh, Amirali how he can help us for the programming, uh, how he can contribute to the programming of this exhibition. And he was struck by one specific artwork and uh, I leave it here and uh, we watch the video first and then we will have a uh, further conversation uh, after the video.
That was pretty amazing and not what I was expecting to hear based on a 16th century piece of music. Anyway, I wanted, I wanted to sort of ask you about how, you know, what the connection is with the text between the piece that you played and, you know, what you were thinking as you interpreted and reinterpreted um, that piece. So as, as somebody that um, been involved uh, with the church, both as an organist and as a choir boy, um, I recognized the, the beauty of the, of the line. So for, for me, the thing that I tried to accentuate throughout the piece was the, the thematic form of the line as it ascends and descends. Generally, the church modes uh, like Dorian, um, Phrygian, uh, they don't include any, any black notes, but um, we have what's known as passing notes or the in-between notes, and those would be, those would be the notes that, that the singers would know when to hit. It wouldn't necessarily have been in the score, but you could say it's a kind of muscle memory or a kind of a psychosomatic memory of where the note should be. So what I did try to do was, was to play within and around that form of where the passing notes are, where the accidentals could be. So would, would singers um, through time be able to interpret this notated music for their time? Would it be sung differently? Absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, that's, that's the beauty of the score. You see, um, as scores got more and more complex um, throughout Western classical music, it got to a point in the new complexity movement where everything was written down, everything was scored, and the performer had no liberty when it came to interpretation. But a score like this, you don't have dynamics, uh, you don't have articulation marks, uh, you don't have breath marks. Um, so it's actually immensely open to interpretation. At this point, a score is an outline. So as a musician, as an interpreter, it gives me almost limitless freedom when it comes to bringing the, the melody um, into a new context. Well, and the name of the piece is Sanctum, which is a play on Sanctus, uh, which in Latin means holy. So is that your title for the piece that you play? Indeed, indeed. And so the reference is to? The phrase, um, the Son, the Holy Ghost, um, and the Father. It's, it's um, Sanctum e Spiriti. So you've just spoken to me about singing in church choirs, being very familiar with um, uh, this music, this Christian music and tradition. And the cadential relationships. Exactly. And for me, I'm going to ask something that's probably on the minds of people watching this, mm. is how does um, a young Muslim boy um, end up singing in choirs? Um, I was lucky to attend a Christian mission school, mm -hmm. and um, I had asked my parents that I wanted to, I wanted to interact with cultures that were not my own, uh, in, in essence, immersing myself in, in pluralism, to literally be in a space where I was forced, if not, you know, gently told that you can't always have your way here. You have to listen to the other. So I wanted to interact with the other. I just didn't know how difficult that would be. And I think being put into that context, um, it showed me, it showed me the power of difference. So as a, Mus a young Muslim boy, um, here I was having to go to church every Sunday and, and sing with the choir and learn Jesus's uh, Beatitudes, which is something I would have never gotten if, if I'd gone to a secular or, um, or even an international school. Well, thank you. And, I, and, and thank you for that amazing performance. I was quite blown away and your use of the disclavier um, so that you could play uh, upon yourself mm. um, was mm. a really uh, fascinating twist and it's, it's, it's crazy that this thing that was written in the 16th century uh, could find such a contemporary expression. Yes. In, it's, almost, it's almost new music, but it's, but it's completely, I mean, if you look at the line, it's, you, you can hear the church modes. I, t I took everyone to church, but in a really new way. Well, thank you, Afraz. Thank you, Amir Ali.
Thank you very much, Amirali and Afras. Uh, you know, when uh, this project was in uh, process and I was excited and uh, looking at the end product, I am still excited and uh, <laughs> having goosebumps. Uh, I want to ask first, you know, um, when I introduced both of you, I didn't reveal which artwork was uh, inspirational for you, um, but I would like to start with Amirali when we were discussing um, how you could create per performance um, events or programming uh, along the hidden stories, uh, the books along the Silk Road. So what was your um, idea or how you were struck by this very specific core book uh, from uh, probably 16th century Spain? Why you wanted to point out this uh, artwork for your uh, artistic creation and how you get in touch with Afras or how you find out for yourself, um, I, I assume your artistic gut feeling, Afras is the right person to connect uh, for this specific project. Yeah, you're, you know, good question uh, or questions. And I think that um, the stars were aligned uh, in such a way that it, it kind of emerged a little bit organically. Um, Afraz is an amazing uh, musician that I've uh, gotten to know. I met him when he was quite young, 19, a student at the time. And uh, but really incredibly talented. And I think that we all, all of us who saw him perform a couple of years ago at the museum um, uh, were, were, were impressed by his skill. And as I got to, to know him, I learned a little bit more about his experience. So, you know, when, when you showed me the, the, the Antiphoner or images of the Antiphoner, it was kind of, hmm. You know, I thought of Afraz because we had been talking about this type of music. It was, it was part of our conversation already. And, and the other thing that had happened is that we had recently um, at the museum completed doing some graphic scores. And graphic scores are, um, are, are, are exactly what they sound like. They're, they're scores that are not uh, notated in the, the vernacular of music notation, but sometimes through images. And you know what struck me about that, what inspired that was that in our collection, we have actually paintings that are, um, um, in my mind, graphic scores of ragas, say from the South Asia. Uh, we have, uh, you know, one on display right now, uh, Rag Hindle, uh, which we recorded. So all these things came together. Um, and so the Antiphoner, you know, it felt natural because it's, it's, it's music. And that's the area in which, which I'm working at the museum. So it felt like that was the right object um, for all those reasons. And uh, very fortunate that I had met for Afraz, who's, who again is an incredible musician at that time. And, um, and the idea of being able to use our piano. Um, uh, Afraz is, is a, a world renowned uh, organist. Um, and, uh, and, but being able to use the keyboard and to use the discalavier and if you noticed, again, I recommend to people that you go to our website to watch the, the video again. Thank you very much. And I, I have a question to Afraz. Uh, you mentioned your uh, education and then how uh, your personal desire to be connected with different cultures uh, and different faith. Uh, would you like to share with us uh, the location of your education? That could be also very interesting. Uh, certainly, um, and, and that will add to the to the plural context that are at play. Um, the school was located in South India, in Tamil Nadu, uh, on a hill station um, called Kodai Kanal. Um, and so this school had been founded by uh, Christian missionaries um, when they um, when they arrived in India as as a way for their children to have an education, even though they were in a foreign context. Um, and uh, I believe it's the oldest IB school in India. That's another thing that might interest uh, some folks. Um, and uh, at this school, I, I actually uh, was introduced to the pipe organ for the first time. And, uh, you know, and I, and I, found, uh, I found music uh, as a very central part of the Christian faith, which uh, for me was just wonderful. 
uh, as as someone that loves sound and the interplay of sound. Um, and the chapel that is at the school actually is one of the finest acoustics I've ever played in the world. Um, would you believe that? Uh, but it, it does have a tin roof, so when it rains, it's horribly noisy. But otherwise, it's a fabulous space to sing and, and play organ. So that's that's the context of my education. Thank you very much. And you had also conversations with Amirali about um, the atmospheric uh, uh, inspiration that you had uh, through the auditorium of uh, Aga Khan Museum. And how Indeed. do you see in acoustic uh, world this relationship? Well, you know, the, the acoustic uh, has uh, a lot to do uh, with the way that we perform and the way, the, the, the way that we play, the way that we think. Um, as an organist, uh, you recognize that the room that the instrument is located in is 50% of the instrument, in a sense. Um, so for me, uh, the Aga Khan Museum is a fabulous space uh, because the acoustics are reminiscent of a small chapel, uh, especially when you have um, when you have all the curtains drawn and, and you know, and it's set a certain way, there's a three second uh, to four second reverberation. Uh, and, and, and the dome, of course, uh, reflects and refracts sound in a very particular way. So um, what, what Amir Ali and I agreed was that we would play upon that uh, idea of a chapel, um, you know, within the performance. And we, we oriented the piano towards the dome so that we could uh, most adequately capture that um, reverberation. It is very interesting because if you think uh, the architectural elements of auditorium, the ceiling is inspired by the great mosque of Isfahan. And you are talking uh, from, um, uh, from the church perspective, there is another layer of uh, interfaith uh, um, interconnections. Interconne uh, Absolutely. Texts, so Absolutely. And, and, and I'll tell you, one of the finest acoustics that, I, that, 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 that I've ever played um, has been, uh, you know, a mosque setting. Um, I, I sang, uh, you know, in a mosque and, and I realized that actually mosques and churches architecturally and acoustically have a lot of uh, commonalities, a lot of common traits. Uh, so one of my dreams is actually to play the organ in the Alhambra, uh, you know, and, and, and I think that would be incredible, uh, you know, because uh, if, if you can hear a muezzin clearly from all parts of the building, imagine an organ in that space. I just want to also um, acknowledge the contribution of Western University uh, and their phenomenal collection uh, and uh, having uh, the opportunity to create this wonderful new uh, uh, music through Afras and uh, through mediation of uh, Amirali. And I was so fascinated that they allowed us uh, that we could work together. And uh, I hope they are also um, happy and uh, thrilled for, for this uh, wonderful collaboration and it, how it also um, creates, new inter, uh, cre creates new relationships and uh, the, the music, the church music brought us to Toronto and created a relationship between Western University and the Aga Khan Museum through BSR, through the exhibition, through the digital exhibition. And you can also uh, have the recordings from Western University musicologists uh, about the uh, origin uh, music of Antiphoner. And, uh, and then now Afras, you have carried everything to contemporary and to our time. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I would like to also know from your perspective um, what was uh, the, the striking moment for you to be engaged with this historic manuscript? Well, you know, uh, I live my life in, in such a way that I believe everything is a score. Uh, so so um, anything can be a score, really. Um, you know, in today's 21st century context, um, you know, pe people... Um, people have recognized that that anything is a text, really, um, and the text has a myriad plethoric meanings depending on, on, on how you wish to see it. So for me to have access to the actual manuscript in front of me, to be able to see uh, the, the, the skill of the scribe, uh, to, to see the skill of the notator uh, on that page and, and, and the calligraphic uh, Latin, um, I, think, I think I treated those um, uh, very much as Amir Ali said, as a graphic score, as well as literally acknowledging uh, the Greek uh, modes, you know, the, the Dorian, Phrygian, Ionian, uh, all of those uh, came into my, into my understanding as well. Um, but I, I would say that um, if someone was expecting a direct translation of 
uh, a melody from the antiphoner into into this piece, they would be very disappointed because I took a far more uh, abstract approach. Much like in Islam, uh, people um, understand that calligraphy and 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 other motifs uh, convey the ineffable rather than figurative uh, uh, interpretations. Um, you know, in, in in a mosque, for example. So I treated the the score like um, like an architectural piece almost. I, I treated it like a like a space. And then I interacted with that space. I was fascinated by your work because, you know, as curator of uh, art museums or museologists, we are interested to display the artwork. But uh, through your work and through Amirali's work, we also touch base on, on the soul of the artwork. Uh, and I, I was very interested because one of our earlier uh, conversation with Susanna in the exhibition after installation, we, we thought uh, um, Susanna was mentioning when the lights uh, lights are going uh, down in the museum in the night, uh, the manuscripts are whispering to each other and having <laughs> uh, conversations. And uh, one of these conversations is, uh, so to speak, your work and it is contemporary and you carry it uh, to our time. And I really appreciate your work. Amirali, do you have final notes or comments do you want to add? Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to say that, um... Um, you know, Afraz is in Dar es Salaam. He joins us from Dar es Salaam, which I think is really cool. Um, thank you, Afraz. The abode um, of peace. But, yeah. but I, this idea of uh, things whispering to one another, it's beautiful. I really think that, uh, you know, it, uh, I, I wanted to say that when we have these opportunities to bring alive or bring to bear in contemporary times an object that is you know, centuries old, I think um, that is a way of, you know, bringing something to life, resuscitating it and, and countering the idea that museums um, are the work of the museologist is to just preserve. Um, and, um, and, you know, there's more to it than that. And the world is asking for more. And so it's been a pleasure to work on this project, but in general, I think that this, uh, this idea of looking at the tangible and the intangible in tandem is um, a powerful one that uh, can help us in our work in museums. Yes, and I, I would add one final thing, which is that we're all lived and living histories, you know, that, that we carry all of that into, into, our, into each moment. And, and I think this project showcased that. And so I want to say thank you to all the partners as well. Um, and thank you to the Aga Khan Museum. Thank you to Amir Ali and Feliz and, um, and all the people that went into making this. Um, and it means a lot to me to, to, you know, to have this experience together, to, to, to be in process together. Yeah, I just wanted to mention Imran Babur, who was the yes. director, um, the video director. And um, he did a beautiful job. You know, the double image I thought was so smart because if you if you watch it again, you'll notice that um, they're playing different parts. Afraz is playing both parts that we're hearing both parts. Um, so it was a very smart way to deal with that. Um, he brought that the problem. matrix alive. That's right. Yeah. So thanks to Imran Babur. Thank you very much, both of you and uh, Melissa for uh, organizing this uh, uh, intervention within, within the break time. And uh, thank you, Afraz, uh, uh, attending from <laughs> Dar al Islam. And thank you, Amirali, for being with us together and for your amazing artistic creation. Thank you, Felice. That was wonderful. Thank you very much. I'm yes. so glad that they could join. This is truly, and you know, I was thinking of the total impact of this local, local global, right? I mean, we have people from Toronto that are all over the world now zooming in for this and the manuscript itself, which is in Toronto, that was inspiration for the performance is from Spain. And so it's just, um, the interconnections and yes. I, I i was very happy you know we wait we waited pa uh, patiently <laughs> for launching this video for today and uh, um um obviously if you would have this symposium in person at aga khan museum and in our beautiful uh, uh, auditorium, we would have also musical components, uh, 
where I was in discussion with Amir Ali, who would be crea uh, creative director of this pro of that programming. And uh, I was very happy when we decided to have this symposium online, virtual symposium, we could carry the musical component of our thinking into this platform as well. I, I feel we didn't lose anything. There is a lot of gain. The exhibit, exhibit probably wouldn't have happened without COVID in some ways. We've had so many opportunities of, you know, really developing the digital exhibit and coming together through Zoom, um, of reaching a much wider audience than we normally would have. So I encourage everyone to, to visit the Aga Khan Museum if you can before Sunday, if you're in Toronto. And again, I'll put the Matterport exhibit in the, um, the chat. It's a virtual exhibit. It walks you through the galleries and you can see all of the objects that were uh, discussing over the two-day symposium and, and the entire exhibit in general. The video is now out on Aga Khan Museum social media today, and we actually have a link to it. It's embedded in the page on the digital exhibit that includes the, the 16th century Spanish Antiphoner and some images from that. And you can also hear the audio of chant song from the Antiphoner, which I think will really inform, you know, this, this whole uh, conversation as well. If you go to the Hidden Stories exhibit and you're standing in front of that big Spanish Antiphoner, you can click on the QR code and hear the sounds of 16th century chant, so. Thank you very much, Melissa.